Hey Finksters! In this video, I'm going to share some cool tips and tricks which can prove to be quite instrumental in saving your time while you're coding in PyCharm. So I request you to please stay with me in this video until the end and later this can prove to be quite helpful to you when you're coding. So without further delay, let us jump right into the tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you today. Now, how can you view these shortcuts? So we can do that using something known as key maps. Now, what is a key map? A key map is nothing but a simple mapping of a certain event or a function that will occur when you press a sequence of keys on your keyboard. For example, if you are trying to copy a piece of code, you press Ctrl and C on your keyboard. This means the keys Ctrl and C are mapped to the function copy. Now how can you view these key maps in PyCharm? It's quite simple. All you need to do is go to the help section in the file menu. A drop down list appears. From here you have to select key map reference. Now as soon as you do that a PDF file opens up where you can have a look at the numerous pre-existing shortcuts that are available for your usage in PyCharm. For example, have a look at this section, create and edit. So all the key maps relating to create and editing or creation and editing in PyCharm are provided under this section. Similarly, all the shortcuts for version control, refactoring, navigation and so on are defined in this PDF. So it's quite handy and I would suggest you to just save it in your system so that you know you can go through them and use them for your code. This will save you a lot of time. Now I will be going through some of the most important shortcuts that you might need while coding and that can save a lot of time for you. So as of now, let us close this PDF. There is another way that you can search a particular key map. So to do that, you need to go to the settings. So how can we go to the settings? Control, Alt and S on your keyboard. Just press those keys. That's a key map as well to open up settings in PyCharm. Now that opens up the settings window for us. Now in the settings window, click on key map. As soon as you do that, the numerous key maps or the pre-existing key maps will open up for you. Now let me select editor actions. Now once you select editor actions, this will open up all the key maps that can be used for the purpose of editing. Now suppose I want to search for the keyword to run my code. So in the search box, I'll type run and hit enter. So all the options available for running the code are now available to you. So if I scroll down, you can see that here I get the options which are available for running my code. It says shift and F10 or I think this should be the configuration. So I highlighted the line. So if you press Alt Shift and F10, this means it will run the code for you. Now let us consider we have a few tabs opened up calci and demo okay and now suppose you want to compare the two tabs together so what i mean by that is i want to split the two tabs and then i want to compare each of them so how you can do that simply go on or move your cursor to the tab right click and split vertically or horizontally as whatever suits you. Now I click on the demo tab and I have the Calci tab opened side by side. So you know this can be quite useful at times and you can use them accordingly. Now let's consider we have a lot of tabs opened up. I only have a few tabs as of now. However, if you are working with a large project, then you might have a lot of tabs open together and you might want to have a better way of viewing them. So to do that, right click on one of the tabs and then move on to 
configure editor tabs and as soon as you do that a window opens up and in the tab placement section you can select left so this is how I like it the opened tabs can be placed on the left hand side of the code editor window so that I can move on to every or I can move on to each tab that I want in a more structured way so let me click on OK now and as soon as I do that you can see that the tabs now are appearing on the left hand side of the screen so that was something I wanted to show you now we are going to discuss some of the key shortcuts that can help us or that can prove to be quite helpful while we are writing our code so let me optimize my screen okay that looks good the first shortcut that I want to discuss is Control and F on the keyboard. So let us write down the shortcuts that we will be discussing one by one. So the first shortcuts that I'm going to discuss is Control F and Control R. So let's see what happens if we press Control F. So as you can see, a search window or a search box opens up here you can type the name of any variable or function that you want to search within your program. If you have a huge program, then trying to search a certain variable can be quite difficult. But with the help of this shortcut, you can easily search for every occurrence of that variable within your program. For example, if I want to search the variable choice, then I simply need to write choice. And as you can see, PyCharm will automatically highlight each occurrence of choice in your program. Similarly, if you want to replace a certain variable name with another name for some reason, then you need to press Ctrl R. Instead of Ctrl F, you need to press Ctrl plus R on your keyboard. Now this opens up another window. So in the first box, I need to write the name of the variable that I want to replace. And in the second box, I need to specify another name that I want to replace. So instead of using choice, I want to make it CH. And now you need to click on replace all. As soon as you do that, if you see choice was now or every occurrence of choice was now replaced by CH. Now you might want to search for classes with a certain combination of words. For example, suppose you want to search all the classes which have the word sort in them. So how can you do that? To so the next shortcut that we will be discussing it's nothing but simply pressing the shift button twice on your keyboard. So let's do that and see what happens. So as soon as I do that, you can see that we have a window opening up for us. It is actually a search window where you can search for a particular item or an element everywhere or within classes, files or you can also search for particular symbols. As of now, we want to search for classes that have the word sort in them. So I selected classes and now I'll type sort. As soon as I do that, you can see all the classes that have the word sort within them have been listed for us. Now the next shortcut that we are going to discuss is Control, Shift and C. Suppose for some reason you want to copy the path of your project. So in order to do that, simply select your project and then press Control, Shift and C on your keyboard. Now you can store the path of this project anywhere you want. For example, I'll paste it in my notepad. And as you can see, I have successfully copied and pasted 
the path of the project in my notepad. Also, if you want, I can show you that this is the exact path of our project. To do that, I'll move on to my explorer or file explorer and then I'll press Control V and I'll search for the path. And as soon as I did that, you can see that I have my entire project opened up in my file explorer. So that can be helpful at times. Now this brings us to the next shortcut, Control plus D. Now let's see what happens if we press Control plus D. Consider you have to print a certain line or copy a certain line in your program for n number of times. For example, I have a print statement that prints hello world. And now I want to copy this print statement five times or I want to print this statement five times in my program. So what do I need to do? All I need to do now is place the cursor on that particular line and then press Control and D. As soon as I do that, you can see that the line was copied. Again, if I press Control D, it was copied yet again and so on. So this can also be quite helpful at times where you need to copy a particular line quite a number of times in your program. Now let's discuss the next shortcut. The next shortcut is Alt, Shift and C. Now for some reason, if you want to view the changes or the recent changes that you made to the project that you are working upon, then this is the shortcut that can help you. So let us press Alt, Shift and C on our keyboard and let's see what happens. Now as you can see, as soon as I pressed Alt, Shift and C, I can see the recent changes listed in a window for me. So as you can see, I made the following changes recently in this project to explain things to you. Now let's discuss what happens if we press a combination of Control, Shift and Minus on our keyboard. Suppose for some reason you want to collapse a certain block of code. For example, we have our Add, Subtract, Multiply and Divide functions. And now I want to collapse the Add function. In this case, we only have a single line of code within the Add function but it might be that you have a huge function. So you want to simply collapse that function and then expand it when needed. So in order to collapse this, we need to press or before pressing anything, you need to place the cursor on the function or where the function ends and then press Control Shift and minus on your keyboard. And as you can see, the function add was collapsed. Now I forgot to mention that when you press Control, Shift and minus, it will not only collapse the particular function, but it will collapse each and every block within your code. So that's what happened here. The functions subtract, multiply and divide also collapsed. We also had a while loop which collapsed as well. Now you might want to expand them again. So in order to do that, we need to press Control Shift and Plus on our keyboard. So let's do that. Let's press Control Shift and Plus. And there we go. We have our blocks back again. But what if you only want to collapse a certain block of code. For example, I want to collapse my while loop or the block that is within the while loop. So in order to do that, all you need to do is press a combination of control and minus on your keyboard. So let's do that. Let's press control and minus on our keyboard. And there we go. We have successfully collapsed the while loop but 
the other blocks of code are still visible to us. Similarly, what if we want to expand this? In order to do that again, you need to press a combination of control and plus on your keyboard that will expand up the particular block of code that you want to expand. So let's expand our while loop again by pressing control and plus on a keyboard. And there we go. We have our while loop block back again. Now the next trick that I'm going to share with you might be useful in some cases depending upon the usage. So I would like to mention that as well in case you need multiple cursors printing a certain line or doing a certain work that are similar to each other then you can do that as well to do that you need to press alt on your keyboard and select each line for example suppose i place my cursor just after the print statement on line number 23 I hope you can see that I have my cursor placed just beside line number 23 in the code editor window. Now I'll press alt on my keyboard and with alt pressed I'll click on each line that I want to edit and then I'll release alt. Now you can see we have five cursors and all of them are available together. So now I can do anything I want to do with them depending upon the usage or the requirement. Now the next tip that I want to share with you is the to do comment. Now to do is a special comment that can help you or your teammates to keep track of actions that need special attention. So what do I mean by that? For example, we have this comment out here. And now I want to keep track of this comment or I want to edit something here later when I come back. So in order to do that, you can use something known as to do. So I'll type to do. And as you can see, as soon as I did that, the color of this comment changed. Now this is different from other comments. As soon as I added to do to this comment, it becomes a special type of comment that can be indexed and stored so that you can come back to it later when you want. For example, I'll add a few more to do comments in my program. I'll make this to do as well and maybe also this one. Okay, so we now have three to do comments and we want to get back to these blocks whenever we come back or at a later point while programming. In order to do that, we have a section known as to do. I hope you can see that on my screen. You need to click on the to do section. And as soon as I did that, you can see that all the to do comments have been indexed and stored specifically or in a particular order for me. So whenever I'll click on each of them, PyCharm will take me to that point in the program. So you see, I can navigate through my program quite easily using the to do comments. With that, we come to the end of this video. If you want me to add a few more shortcuts and tricks for you, please mention them in the comments below and I'll make sure that I keep adding more such tricks and tips for you, which can fasten the process of coding for you. Please do not forget to join me in the next video where I am going to explain what are macros in PyCharm.